A couple of weeks ago, I told you about a new 2018 congressional candidate named Amy Vilela, who is challenging a corporate Democrat who is a self-proclaimed progressive named Ruben Kiwin, who's currently representing Nevada's 4th Congressional District. Now, Amy is challenging Ruben because... For months now, he has been refusing to listen to the thousands of constituents that have been calling on him to co-sponsor H.R. 676, which, as you all know, is John Conyers' single-payer health care bill. Now, Amy attended a town hall with Representative Kewen over Mother's Day weekend, and she told him the story of her daughter, Shalin. Now, Shalin died, unfortunately, because she was unable to prove that she had medical insurance, and as a result, she was denied basic medical screenings that would have ultimately saved her life. So Amy explained to Ruben that a bill like H.R. 676 would have saved her daughter's life and asked him to co-sponsor it. And his response basically was no. I mean, that wasn't verbatim what he said, but he did the typical corporate Democrat dodge and how we have to defend the ACA and beat around the bush. And really, he has been ignoring voters. So as a result, Amy is challenging him. She's truly going to represent the people in Nevada's 4th District, and she will be co-sponsoring H.R. 676. She's going to do what Ruben won't do. She's going to represent the voters in Nevada's 4th. So now that he has a challenger, I expected one of two responses from Ruben. So the first type of response I expected was that Ruben Kewen would likely finally co-sponsor H.R. 676 because as we've seen with New York's 14th district, well, once it was the case that progressive Democrat Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez announced that she was primarying a corporate Democrat there, Joe Crowley, he then co-sponsored H.R. 676 in that same week. Now, the second type of response that I expected from Ruben was for him to try to double down on his unwillingness to support H.R. 676. And rather than telling us the truth that he's been bought off by the health industry, uh, he instead is going to try to vilify H.R. 676. And, you know, it turns out I was right. He did, in fact, opt for the latter option. So in a Facebook Live town hall he held with Representative Jackie Rosen, he pretended to actually care about what his constituents thought when he doesn't, and he took a bunch of questions from them. And as you could have guessed, he received multiple inquiries about H.R. 676, but before he really addressed H.R. 676, he wanted to take a moment to really prove to you all that he cares about you. He cares about you getting health insurance, and he knows from firsthand experience how important it is for Americans to receive the health care that they need. Um, we have a few actual, actually a few questions. Um, regarding the H.R. 676, uh, this is the Medicare for All bill uh, sponsored by our colleague John Conyers, mm -hmm. uh, who, mm -hmm. by the way, is currently the longest serving uh, member mm -hmm. of Congress. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's a good friend of ours, and uh, we're grateful for all his service uh, in the last few years. Um, you know, look, Jackie, I, you know, something that I don't share with a lot of people often is that um, three years ago, even though I was a state senator, um, I was uninsured. Um, I was not only uninsured, but I was, I was also unemployed. Uh, and, you know, up until I was 13 years old, uh, my family did not have health insurance. You know, my mom uh, came here to Las Vegas uh, and she joined uh, the MGM Grand as a housekeeper. And thanks to the Culinary Union, uh, when I was 13 years old, I was able to get good health coverage. But up until I was that age, I didn't have any health coverage. Uh, and again, just three years ago, uh, I didn't have health coverage, you know, and it's, it's very difficult because you don't want to go out there and play sports. You don't want to go mm -hmm. out there and, God forbid, you trip and break your hand or, or yeah. a foot. Uh, yeah. You're going to be in debt for the rest of your life. Uh, so part of the reason why when I came into Congress, uh, you know, and I started fighting to protect the Affordable Care Act was for that same reason. Uh, because now we have 24 million more Americans who have mm -hmm. health coverage. Uh, thanks to the Affordable Care Act. Now, is it a perfect bill? Absolutely not. Uh, but this is now where we begin the discussion as to what, what is the next step? Um, how are we going to find coverage for the 11 million people who still don't have health insurance? Again, I've been there, and I understand what it's like. Uh, and, and that's why, you know, right now in Congress, we're going to do everything possible to protect the Affordable Care Act, but also start looking into new ways on how to expand that coverage. 
So we all heard it. Uh, he states, I've been there and I understand what it's like. So he only wants to protect the ACA and expand coverage, but doesn't want to move towards single payer, which would be the ultimate solution to the problem that he's bringing up. I mean, you think with the story that he told us there, he would be one of the most vocal proponents of HR 676 because HR 676 makes sure that nobody's left out, but he's not doing that. In fact, in this next clip here, he tries to muddy the waters about HR 676 and he implies that the problem that, you know, he experienced, you know, being unable to get healthcare when he was 13, you know, that, that, that's not something that can be solved with HR 676. And he proceeded to just brazenly lie about HR 676 in this next clip. Um, my concern though, Jackie, with uh, HR 676 is that, you know, it shifts the cost uh, from the corporations down to the, to the workers. You know, we have right now, right. Uh, the majority of our employers right now, they're non-retirees receive their health coverage uh, through their employer. That's right. And so in, if, if HR 676 were to pass as is, uh, it would shift the cost from, for example, like my mom. Uh, my mom works for the culinary union or works for the MGM and is a member of the culinary union. It would shift the cost from the MGM grant, which is where she works with the corporation, down to the worker, to her. Uh, and again, and I don't think that's the ideal scenario here. Right. You know, we want to make sure that obviously everybody's paying their fair share but that the cost doesn't shift down to the worker. Uh, and also part of the reason why uh, in the last two years since I've been campaigning for Congress and now that I'm in mm -hmm. Congress, mm -hmm. uh, I supported the public option, uh, which is something that I believe, uh, uh, it, 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 you know, we live in the greatest country, in the most powerful country in the world. You know, it's unacceptable that somebody should not have health insurance. And so I believe uh, that uh, health insurance is a right uh, and I believe that everybody should have an opportunity to have health coverage. Uh, and look, this is uh, a very complex issue uh, mm -hmm. that requires a very uh, complex uh, solution. Uh, so it's not something that we can fix from one day to the next. And as long as I'm here in Congress, I will continue making sure that we have a good piece of legislation moving forward uh, to make sure that everybody has health coverage in America because we are in the most powerful, richest country in the world. Everybody should have a, uh, health insurance. It should be a right. Okay, so what he's saying there is it's just wrong. So he states, my concern with HR 676 is that it shifts the cost from the corporation down to the workers. And he states, the majority of employees that are not retirees receive their health coverage through their employer. Let's accept what he's saying here. Let's accept that everything he's saying about HR 676 is true. Well, that still raises a lot of questions. What about the people who aren't employed? What about the employees that aren't able to get health insurance from their employers? What about the employers like Walmart that instead of just hiring fewer people for more hours, they end up hiring more people and schedule them for less hours. And they say, look, if you go over 30 hours, we're going to write you up or fire you because then we have to start offering you benefits like health coverage. Are you going to... Think about those people who are being screwed over by their employers who don't want to offer them health insurance. What about the employers like Hobby Lobby that don't want to cover certain healthcare necessities, specifically when it comes to women's health? What about them? And also, he's acting like employers subsidize 100% of the costs when they don't. You still have to pay your monthly premium, whereas with Medicare for All, we all pay a little bit more in taxes, but we don't have to pay monthly premiums or deductibles. But he's not telling you about that. He's trying to make it seem as though you're going to be paying more when in actuality you're going to have more money in your pockets because if you don't have to pay for your monthly premiums and you don't have to pay high deductibles even if your taxes go up a little bit because we have a single payer system you're still going to have more money in your pocket as a result of you not paying your monthly premium now he also says here it's unacceptable that somebody should not have health insurance and adds i believe health insurance is all right so he's telling you all this about how it's really important, you know, he, he couldn't get health insurance until he was 13 and he wants to make sure that health insurance is a right, but let's really examine what he's saying here because I think it's very interesting and really when you dive into it, it's telling actually. By saying that health insurance is a right, that's very different than the rhetoric he used on the campaign trail. So under the ironically titled Insuring Healthcare for All Americans tab, which he doesn't support and pretends to, uh, it's on the issues page of his campaign website. He states his belief that health care 
is a basic human right that must be protected. But here in this video, he's saying that health insurance is a right. Now, at face value, that may seem like a benign semantical difference, but providing everyone with health care and providing everyone with health insurance are two very different goals. To give everyone health Care means that you give them what they need, no ifs, ands, or buts. If they need health care, if they need a surgery that costs millions of dollars, for example, hypothetically, you get them that care that they need. However, to give everyone health insurance means that you have a private insurance company that is profit-driven that gets to stipulate the amount of care you actually receive. So they may provide you with health care insofar as you know, what you need falls within the plan that you pay for. But in reality, your insurance provider isn't going to pay for everything. If you need a surgery, for example, they could only cover a certain portion of it and make you cover the rest, even though you're paying your monthly premium. The point is that giving everyone health care and health insurance, those are two very different things. Now, that may sound like I'm being a nitpicky person here, you know, who's just trying to argue based on semantics. But understand that Ruben Kiwin is a very smart individual and he knows the difference between health insurance or health care. If he doesn't know the difference, then he probably shouldn't be speaking about this issue and he should probably resign immediately because that distinction is very important and notice that Ruben Kiwin here after campaigning on health care as a human right is now moving the goalposts he's now saying that he only believes in health insurance as a basic human right here's what it comes down to it's very simple if you truly believe that health care is a basic human right and that nobody should be left behind 100% of American citizens should receive health care then you would co-sponsor HR 676 because it does just that. And if, for example, you think that HR 676 is imperfect, well, that's all the more reason to jump on board with it and co-sponsor it because then that gives you the opportunity to offer amendments to HR 676 and perfect it in the way that you want it to be perfected. But instead, Ruben Kiwan here is lying to his constituents about HR 676 and he's pretending to be on their side when he's not. Ruben Kiwan doesn't want to tell you about the fact that he accepted thousands upon thousands of dollars from the health industry, specifically health industry PACs and hospitals. So by lying here, he's actually defending his donors' interests. And while Ruben Kiwin has already raised more than $500,000 for his 2018 campaign, more than half of which has come from super PACs, Amy Valela is not taking any PAC money. She is pledged to run a people-powered campaign, and if you really want to defeat a corporate Democrat like Ruben Kiwin, you can help Amy out. Go to amyforthepeople.com, send her a donation, even if you can offer nothing more than a dollar. That helps. That helps defeat someone like Ruben Kiwin, who is now just straight up lying about Medicare for All, because it's very clear he's not going to support it. He's doubling down, uh, and he's now trying to uh, pretend to still be on our side when he's doing something that is brazenly against the will of his constituents. They want him to co-sponsor HR 676, and instead he's choosing to go in the opposite direction and is now lying about it. We need to kick him out of office. We need to make an example out of Ruben Kiwin. And let's elect Amy Valela, someone who actually cares about the people and who will co-sponsor HR 676 on day one. Support this podcast by joining the independent progressive media revolution today at humanistreport.com.